When you hear what this tiny little agency has been spending and the money it's dishing out to its friends and employees, you're likely to need a tranquilizer. So there's really no reason to have it, in my opinion. Chris June Kiliani is mystified why the Clean Water Coalition exists at all. The general suspicion is that CWC is still around because it provides generous incomes to a gaggle of politically connected public officials. Local governments are all but unanimous in the belief that CWC's primary mission, that is, building a billion dollar wastewater pipeline into Lake Mead, is toast, unnecessary, and far too expensive. CWC is an agency in search of a mission. Here it seems to be a justification to find anything to cobble together to create and keep this going. And with no disrespect to the people there, it needs, in my opinion, to go away. CWC's own board members seem to share these doubts. At its most recent meeting, right after a rap music birthday video was played and donuts were handed out, member Steve Kirk mentioned the gorilla in the room. The formulation of the CWC really was to build a project which we don't think we're going to build now. Its mission is gone and its $60 million bankroll is in limbo, but CWC is still pretty good at spending money. It has a $7 million budget, but only four employees. Rent in this nice building in Henderson is $215,000 a year. Another $300,000 goes for miscellaneous operating expenses and $632,000 in salaries for the four employees, with the biggest chunk of that going to former County Commissioner Chip Maxfield. While on the commission, Maxfield chaired the CWC panel. Now he works for it. Former Las Vegas City Manager Doug Selby, who championed the CWC pipe project during his years at City Hall, is now paid up to $23,000 a month to give advice and attend meetings, even though Selby lives in New York State. The public also pays for his travel expenses. The lady handing out donuts is a longtime political organizer who's worked for the campaigns of Maxfield and Steve Kirk. Her contract pays her $165 five dollars an hour up to 170 grand a year. CWC has yet another PR contractor also getting 13,000 per month up to 170 grand a year for his one-man company run from a private home in Boulder City. The big money though is for lawyers. Attorney Bob Marshall, the guy who drafted the law creating CWC, is now its primary counsel and can bill up to half a million per year. Marshall is the attorney who advised CWC to not speak to reporters. A second law firm gets up to 125,000. CWC also pays 7,000 a month for its own lobbyist in Washington. So why spend so much on consultants if there is no mission? Board member Steve Ross is wondering the same thing. Well, we're trying to redefine that mission. We're trying to find out what that mission should be. The coalition's boldest gambit was in trying to slip in a monumentally generous wage and benefits package for the four employees. The presence of our camera at the last meeting may have prompted the GM to delay open conversation about this package, but here's what it would do. A first-year employee would get 12 days of vacation, but since they work four 10-hour days, that's the equivalent of three weeks, not counting the 11 holidays, plus a paid day for birthdays, plus up to four administrative days off, more than three weeks of sick leave, extra days off for a wellness program, and in the second year, all of that increases. A first-year employee could get 10 weeks off per year. But there's more. CWC would pay 100% of health insurance, life insurance, and retirement, plus a 401k deal with up to 8% raises and another potential 10% merit boost. Maxfield first tried to get this plan approved without discussion. Board members said no deal. What do other public officials think of this sweet proposal? That's a disconnect with reality, in my opinion. Uh, we've reported in the past about spending by our water agencies millions for PR campaigns, consultants, lobbyists, cattle ranches, even sheep. Now that the boom years have ended, the Water Authority has been forced to change its free spending ways, but only to an extent. The I-Team filed a series of public records requests to see what agency honchos have been spending and where they've been going. It's a lot of traveling, you know. It is definitely worth talking about. Uh, County Commissioner Steve Sisolak had no idea just how many miles water officials have been racking up until we showed him the expense reports from the last three years. Individual trips taken by SNWA General Manager Pat Mulroy and her longtime Deputy K Brothers do not require full approval from the boards that oversee the water agencies. Sisolak was surprised not only by the dollar amounts, but by the exotic locales. They go to nice locations. They're not going to Des Moines or to 
You know, Chicago usually are Grand Rapids. The records show they have gone to Chicago, but it's among their least expensive destinations. Mulroy has become a water celebrity of sorts, a much sought after speaker at conferences, both foreign and domestic. And there's one being held somewhere pretty much every week. During 2008, Mulroy took 21 out of town trips, including four out of the country. In one five month stretch, she visited Zurich, Switzerland, Singapore, Stockholm, Sweden, and Vienna, Austria. Some of the costs were covered by the event hosts, but the dollar amounts listed are those paid by you. During that year, water rates in Las Vegas were increased twice, and water customers were asked to cut back on their consumption. Where I've got a problem is when you're asking my ratepayers, again, to conserve water. We've raised the rates twice in the last 19 months and spend the money on travel. It's just, it doesn't seem a adequate use of the resources. We're in a different world now than we were a few years ago. Um, our travel costs over the last two years have dropped more than two-thirds. SNWA Scott Huntley says the water agencies simply can't afford to travel as they did in years past. Overall, travel expenses were cut in half from 2008 to 2009, then were cut again. Yet even in 2009, Mulroy and Brothers had 44 out-of-town trips, and through June of this year, they had taken 19. Huntley defends the travel in general, saying the world can learn plenty from how Southern Nevada has coped with drought and climate change. Mulroy's trip to Singapore, for instance, gave her a chance to learn as well. What we have found out from going to a lot of these conferences is that we pick up information on things that other countries are doing. Australia, for example, uh, with the desalination program that they have. Ironically, although Mulroy went to Singapore to learn about desalination, her agency paid for ads back home, which disparaged its potential to help Nevada. During the Singapore outing, Mulroy paid more than $600 for a dinner at Raffles, known for its, quote, timeless elegance, its $100 steaks and $45 appetizers. The trip to Sweden was taken, Huntley says, because SNWA was a finalist for a major water award, which is why he says board member and North Las Vegas mayor Sherry Buck came along in case they won. Buck's tab came to more than $7,500. She took two other water trips as well. The trip to Vienna was followed by a jaunt to Hollywood to debut a documentary financed by SNWA. Even domestic trips can get expensive when one stays at the Ritz-Carlton, which Mulroy does. Credit card records show Mulroy also pays for expensive meals without leaving town. Nearly $600 for dinner at a local steakhouse, more than $500 for chow at Bellagio, nearly $200 for a meal at Olive Garden. Scott Huntley says there is internal oversight of such expenses. She's the boss, so it's not like, uh, I don't know, is there somebody who comes back and says, wow, $500 for dinner, you shouldn't have spent that much money. Well, I know on her travel, of course, a board member must um, sign off on any travel arrangements in advance. Pat Mulroy earns close to $300,000 a year, and while it's great she can help the rest of the world learn about drought, it's not clear how that benefits the folks here who pay her salary. Well, all this week, the I-Team has examined thousands of pages of expense reports from the most powerful agencies in the state. Tonight, a final look at the leadership of the Transportation Commission, which controls a multi-million dollar budget. And they go on a lot of trips, apparently, including, as the I-Team's Jonathan Humber discovered, a pretty sweet deal, depending on the hotel. Well, yeah, and it's not particularly sweet for the riders of <laughs> RTC buses at all. They didn't like what we found, and neither did the chairman of the RTC board. Now, yes, the bus system is the envy of most of the nation, but you may not like how they get there. Down on MLK and Lake Mead, times are tough, and hearing about RTC's travel expenses didn't help. You have $5 a day to get on the bus, and yet you're out running around like you're AIG. Wow, okay. And I mean, is that helping us? No, right? But a 13 minute ride on the 105 down to RTC headquarters, Chairman Larry Brown isn't because, much happier. Again, sometimes it's not the dollar amount, sometimes it's the perception. And if that perception becomes reality, then we have an issue. We showed our findings to Brown. He's clear that cheap is the way to go. That an employee traveling on behalf of the RTC should make a strong effort to look for the least expensive mode during travel. But that's not always the case for some employees. There's the $889 flight to San Antonio, and like other agencies, there were also trips to Carson City to attend the legislature. 
Instead of using the free video conferencing system, General Manager Jacob Snow went up north many times last session. He says it's about FaceTime. You're in private one-on-one -on -one meetings with legislators. You're meeting with other lobbyists. You're working on legislative language. But instead of staying in Carson City at cheaper hotels, Snow stayed the night each time in Reno, about 30 minutes away, at hotels which cost more than double the competitive rate. He says there's a good reason. We know we're going to get a clean, quiet room, and we know we're going to get some uh, good value, and we have access to some business services that we need to make utilization of. And you're also getting rewards points too, right? I do get rewards points, yes. 19 out of 19 times in trips to San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Denver, and elsewhere, Snow maintained his Hilton Rewards Gold status by staying at Hilton Brand Resorts, even though cheaper places were available. Points for the taking every single time. Is that at all a motivating factor to go to some of these places? It's a factor, but it's not the primary factor. Back on MLK, little sympathy for free Wi-Fi and a clean room. They're worried about getting them some credits and some points and stuff. What about us? Tough times on the road, by bus or by plane. Our Public Records Law Act says that any one of us can walk into a public agency during business hours and ask to review any public record for free. The agencies can charge the actual cost of copies and for, quote, extraordinary use of personnel or technology, whatever that means. Sounds relatively simple on paper, but the I team has found it is another story entirely in practice. To most, it looks like a disaster. A few years ago, the 8 News Now Promotions Department poked fun at the I-Team, spotlighting the constant state of, well, clutter in our office. Exposing corruption. The truth is, it always looks like this, littered with the bedrock of any solid investigation, public records. The real meat of some stories are going to be the documents. Former state senator and retired newsman Terry Kerr has spent his career making messes like ours and the resulting government scrutiny possible. Key provisions of Nevada's Public Records Act, the law that guarantees everyone access to public records, originated in his office. And though Kerr's term in the Senate has sunset, his commitment to sunshine has not. What I'm getting into um, are the complaints, and I get them uh, periodically, that um, They'll let us have them, but it's going to cost a ton of money to get them. Case in point, half a dozen public records requests from the I-Team to local, regional, and state agencies. Each sought essentially the same information, three years' worth of expense reports and travel records for nine or fewer top-level staffers. The majority provided the documents for free, among them the Southern Nevada Water Authority, a frequent subject of I-Team investigations. Generally speaking, we try to keep it to a form where we're not actually charging people uh, it, to, to, to get the records that they're requesting. We're, there's a number of things that we can do. Electronic records among them. The Clark County School District, however, and the governor's office put a price on access, more than $400 for two days of school district staff time to gather the records, plus 10 cents a page for copies. A few dollars more with the governor's office for less staff time at a higher rate, including a few hours to sort the records. It would seem to me these would probably be fairly fairly easily located. I don't, I don't know that that would take anything like 12 and a half hours. Though we paid for the work, the district's records were incomplete. And what we got from the governor was so disorganized, we questioned how the records were ordered. His attorney, Jackie Lombardo, responded, they weren't. Makes it more fun that way. Uh, this is, uh, that's, a, that's embarrassing. You don't say that. Responses like that, says Kerr, only reaffirm a conclusion he reached long ago. Barriers to government oversight, be they shuffled records, slow responses, or exorbitant costs, are meant to be just that. Take our follow-up request to the school district. We asked for a year's worth of billing statements for the district's more than 1,800 purchasing cards. Its response? We can have the records for the equivalent of a starting teacher's salary. Nearly $34,000 for staff time and copy costs. In a written statement to the I-Team, School Board President Terry Janison explains while the district is committed to providing public documents, doing so puts a strain on its limited resources. And the idea that we can defeat a request by raising abhorrent obstructions related to costs um, just goes against the spirit of the bill. Care tells the I-Team he's shopping for a bill sponsor to regulate the cost of access while balancing legitimate resource issues statewide. We sure hope he finds one before we have to reconsider our decorating scheme. 
While we as journalists rail against these kind of roadblocks all the time, imagine if you're the one who needs a public records and the response is, you can have it for a few hundred bucks. And unlike the open meeting law, there's no oversight, no place you can go to to complain about it unless you have deep enough pockets to fight it out in yeah. court, which most people don't. Do you think they were trying to obstruct you or was this really what they wanted was the money for that? Oh, I, I think it was absolutely an attempt to obstruct us.